You are in tune to Eats, Beats, and Rhymes, and I am your host, Yo Jules DJ. And that's once again, it's the end of the month. You know what time it is, how we get down over here, Eats, Beats, and Rhymes. We take the time to dissect certain albums. Matter of fact, not even certain. We're dissecting all the albums off the mic, excuse me, off the source five mic rated extreme extraordinary list that got put together years ago, started off in 1991. We are currently on round number five, if you will, album number five of this of this journey that we've been taking. And this month we are talking about none other. Who's a good one tonight? Then the actual, it's not that, and most of the time it's been debut projects. This is the second album that these guys put out together. It is the sophomore release off of Long Island's own De La Soul. De La Soul is dead is the album Eats, Beats, and Rhymes. Make some noise for tonight's five mic dissection of De La Soul is dead. Make some noise for it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. man. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. a good hey, reverend. Doctor, shout out to Ike Infamous, our Long Island representatives. Ike, I don't know where you at, but if you in, if you out there, baby, tune in. It's your night. You know what I'm saying? We gonna get this is this is technically the second five mic dissection where Long Island is coming to play. We also mm-hmm. happen to do Eric B and Rakim with Let the Rhythm Hit Him. No, no, yeah, Let the Rhythm Hit Him. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And this is again our return to, 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 to the sistering, the neighboring, you know, mm-hmm. we, we call it the city, we call it the town, the neighboring town, the neighboring mm-hmm. island. Yeah, the borough, it is neighbor, Long neighboring island, town, AKA neighboring town. Strong Island. Let's talk about it. Nine instrumentals in the building. Shout out to everybody that joins us every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here live on Twitch. Let's go around the room, like I said, and just introduce everybody. No need to find out who you're picking because we know what it is. But let's go ahead and introduce everybody around the room real quick. This is going to be talking about tonight's dissection. Start off with my man, DJ Scanners, a.k.a. Baba Midi. DJ Scanners, what is up, sir? What's good, man? What's going on? I don't, I, am I the only one that can't hear him? I hear him. No, I can hear him. Okay. Hold on one second. I think I know what's going on on my end. Cause I don't hear none of y'all. I know what's going on. Okay, I see it. I see. I see. I see what's going on. What happened? Glizzy water in your console? <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Whoa! <laughs> Glizzy water in the console. We we are we are going to go ahead and have to, to instate tonight's first version of timeout. <laughs> Triple C, I'm gonna have, ask you to go into the corner and turn around. Pause. You know what I'm saying? How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> that was no like the Daylaw skit. He just bullied you. Know, like the Daylaw skit. Right <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I would take. I, 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 I rather BK Lounge skit. You know what I'm saying? But you ain't gonna disrespect me with the movie. You know what I'm saying? Listen, let's talk about. Like I said uh, again, I, I apologize. There was a sound issue on my end. Did it scandalous? Uh, we're, we're talking about obviously De La Soul is dead. Uh, real, real quick, what does it mean to you? Man, one of one of my favorite De La albums. I love all the De La albums. Definitely one of my favorites. And tonight we're gonna just you know talk a little bit about it, and get into it, and, and let people know why it deserves what it deserves. Fair enough. Let's move on to our man DJ Hobo Triple T Radio representative, sir. Two up, two down, sir. Yeah. De La Soul in a few in a few in a few quick words. Yeah. What does this album mean to you? Oh man, um, some of my favorite De La Soul songs are on this album. We're gonna definitely dissect that tonight. Again, for those who don't know, among the dissection that we do, we will be playing the entire album all night and finding out why we got to this place or why the source got to this place that is called the Five Mic List. Thank you, DJ Hobo, for that. Let's keep it moving. Executive producer Triple C from Queens. Trip C from Queens. Trip De La Soul is dead. What smart ass remark do you have for this album? <laughs> De La Soul is not dead. Not at all. <laughs> it's not dead, but yeah, that's something that, you know, kind of is in a, it's in the stash. It's, like, it's always available when you need it. And it's, you know, it's a must. It is now. Yeah, it's a must play. Yeah. Oh yeah, right, right, right. It is now. Again, for, for those that don't know, I mean, it's it's been at least over a year at this point. De La Soul's catalog, at least the early portions of it, was not available on any DSPs for years. But that is all changed. Make sure you guys support De La Soul, especially this particular album, because it's the high, it's the highlighted topic that we're talking about tonight. De La Soul is dead. Thank you, Trip C, for breaking that down. My man, the good Reverend Doctor, Long Island representative tonight, representing North Carolina and other days, but tonight, straight mm-hmm. Long Island, sir. A few quick words about De La Soul is dead, if you don't mind. I mean, well, first of all, this album just it just takes you to a time when, you know, before. 
Maybox and all that. The, if you had a Jetta, you had a Maybox. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was that was it. Was just that that time in in life. Like, I I don't think I played any other album when I was 12 more than this one. Ah, to the that's point, dope. you know. And they, I mean, they hometown heroes, man. They, 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 you got a crazy history with they love, man. This is a fact. This is a big fact. Long Island representatives, one of one of one of many. Like I said, that we've that we've talked about on this channel many a time, and we love talking about Dayla. So again, now that all their music is available for everybody to enjoy. Let's get ahead and wrap things up with my man Malcontent. Malcontent, once again joining us per request. We received you <laughs> the email. You know what I'm saying? We we we, sure, we 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 got we got we got the RSVP back, sir. In a few quick words, why did you have to join tonight's? Five mic dissection of De La Soul's day. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, uh, one of y'all mentioned that it was like, you know, um, like one of the best or uh, De La albums. To me, it is, you know, I, I love Three Feet High, but this is my favorite De La album. And it's one of my favorite hip hop albums, period. I think it's one of the best ever. And man, just like, just like Gerber said, man, it's like memories. I mean, I, I'm a little older. I was in high school when this came out in 91, right? You're the college. You're the college. You're the graduate school. <laughs> <school. laughs> Using graduate school. <laughs> no, but like, you know the craziest thing, much like what, what Good Rev just said, I think maybe a couple of others said in here. I played this album, I think more than anything in 91. I mean, I played this, I still play it a ton of times, but I played it so much when it came out. It's like one of the funniest, just most fun, zany, dope albums to ever like listen to. It's just out there. And it's just all kind of layers to it, man. So I love it, man. Can't 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 wait to get into it. Fair enough. We always, I, I, obviously, we have to give big, 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 big rest in peace to Dave, True Go, True Dove. I mean, uh, True Goy the Dove, pardon me. I mean, the man's a legend. We miss you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I, I wish you got could have seen this legacy. It's a beautiful thing. Everything you work for is happening. And again, shout out to every, all the De La Soul fans out there that represented. I believe, like, I believe it was about a year ago that, that we were counting down, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to the day mm -hmm. of, of, of streaming platforms going live you know what i mean so it's definitely a beautiful thing shout out cassette bay in the building shout out mr september in the building i see i guess i saw earlier in instrumentals shout out to everybody that joins us every monday night especially tonight it's a holiday for those who don't know it is memorial day weekend but again we're here to provide you with nothing but entertainment let's go ahead and start the game off it's not even the game tonight's a, a, a conversation a conversation yeah. about dope music again no no winners or losers shout out dj little rock in the building dj little rock what up we are talking about De La Soul is dead. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and start things off. Let's play the album. Like I said, let's talk about it track by track. Uh, I, we usually have five rounds around here where we're going to play all music all night. Five rounds go by go, go by the following sort of themes. The first one being singles. The second being lyrics. The third being production. The fourth being the skip factor. And the fifth being the overall question, did it age well? Let's start talking about the singles off of this project. Again, this was an amazing release. I believe uh, the release date, if I'm not mistaken, was May 13th, 1991, which is basically a spring summer project, which again, is kind of how you associate De La Soul, but with that artwork still being as colorful as as as, as we imagine to be, the, the, the pottery, the, what do you call the, the, the pot holding the, the, the flowers just being, you know, sort of turned over and, and, and the flowers being dead, it, it represented a whole new different meaning to what they were trying to bring on their sophomore project. Let's uh, let's start things off with track one. I mean, do you guys want to hear the intro? Do, do, do I mean, do we want it straight to music? Let's get straight to music, right? Music, music. Mm -hmm. yeah. music. Even though all the skits are great. <laughs> Yo, we can work it off. No, the good rev is 100% right, and Malcolm yeah. wrote up too. It, it's a funny album. It's got amazing skits and storylines, and we're definitely going to talk about that. But let's mm -hmm. talk about some music. Let's start with a little song that some people might have got put it onto initially, maybe back in 91, and some might have gotten put onto a little down, down the line in life when they were playing a little video game called Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Let's talk about Oodles of O's. Oh. My sister, you get it from my bro. All I is is man and once an embryo. Am I solid gold? I don't cast the glow. Yes, I guess it's reflex. Some have no control. I rather let a laughter and tally up my dough. Canoeing up the river or out into the hole. You're just 
just know we're not so not to the roll. Some may love me, love me, I hear click and throw. Some shake your hand, but this cold show. I was John Doe, no, I'm Mr. Jolico. This with the witness, so now I don't know. O's got the world, cause O's was on tour. Girls gave the O's and guys over the shore. Where they arose, well, nobody knows. What do they mean? Well, here's how it goes. Oh, shoot's got the O's when you hold the dough. You know who you are, but they didn't know. And now with respect, they flex like a pro. You're first another nigga, but now an afro. Oodles and oodles and O's and oodles and oodles and oodles of O's. You know they giving oodles and O's and O's and oodles and oodles and oodles of O's. They giving oodles and O's and O's and oodles and oodles and oodles of O's. Last man. I could play songs all night, like I said, but we got to keep, it's 27, is it 27? Am I bugging? How many, how many tracks are on this project? Listen, no, skits, no, skits no, included, no. yeah, and, and everything, 27 tracks all together. I, I, I was so excited to dive into the project, I didn't even follow the lineup. We, again, we got to talk singles off the bat, but <laughs> um, I mean, I'll, I'll leave it up to the room. Like I said, what do you, what do you guys think? Do you want to go track by track? Do you want to go, you know, sort of uh, the, per category? What, what are you guys thinking? I'll leave it up to the room. Uh, you I'm structure. glad you played Oodles. Uh, yeah, let's go by, yeah, let's go by category. You got to play that. Executive mm-hmm. producer says we got to go back to the original way, but I did get to play a little bit of Oodles and News. Like I said, we're going to talk about mm-hmm. where that in the structure of all this. But let's sure. go ahead and singles as well, because this is really, again, what most people might recognize if you're not a, if you're not a heavy album listener like I wasn't at the time. But let's talk about some of these songs. Uh, let's go in order. Let, 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 let's, let's start things off with single number one off of De La Soul. If you know, you know. Let's talk about it. Ring, ring, ring. Ha, ha, hey. Let's talk about it. De La Soul. Yes, this is Miss Renee King. I'm from Philadelphia. I'd like for you to give me a call on the area code 215-222-4209. And I'm calling in reference to the music with Thank you. can't get through, why don't you leave your name and your number, and I'll get back to you, hey, how are you doing, sorry you can't get through, why don't you leave your name uh, and your number, and I'll get back to you, once again it's another rap band, it's feeling I am, I can't stand it, wanna be down with the day glow, knocking on my door saying, hey yo yo, knocking on my door saying, hey yo yo, I got a funky new tune with a fly banjo, I find it hard enough dealing with my own biz. How they get my name and number? Then I stop and think and wonder about a plan. Yo, man, I gotta step out town. You wanna call me up? Take my number down. It's two, 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 two. I got an answer machine that can talk to you. Hey, yo. Hey, how you doing? Sorry, you can't get through, but you your name and your number. I'll get back to you, yo, check it, exit the old style, into the new, but nothing's new, by being hawked by you, or should I say a flock, cause I'm on every block, there's Harry, Dick, and Tom, with a demo in his car. Thursday night, boy was high, girl fly like pipe. They hold hands until next day. Boy, then let's go hit his way. Boy rolls butt rack to his boy. Direction brings bad boy joy. Boy thinks of that big fat pack. Big black fat, love big black fat. Girl calls boy to stand him up on Saturday. Saturday, Saturday is the Saturday. It's the Saturday, it's the Saturday. Saturday is the Saturday. 
Saturday into Saturday. Back once more with the wall up in the score. Stress about a rich shit to make it rock it. Revival of the roller boogie in a rickin' shit to make it think about the time it's spoke fun instead of fight. But nothing from a piece of metal should have jumped. Like, slip your butt to the fix of this mix. Toss that briefcase and time to let loose. Cause you work like heck to get the weekend check. So one fast in that sleeper on your neck. Connected like a vibe from the wheel to the foot. Come on, everybody, with the funky output. That's how his daughter Millie became one of my favorite faces. She had the curves that make you want to take chances. I mean, I hurt man, I love to make advances. I guess the father must have got the same feeling. I mean, actually finding his own daughter Millie appealing. At the time, no one knew, but it was a shame that Millie became a victim of the touchy, touchy game. On your dookie earring, someone must be tugging. You were a dancer who could always be found clubbing. Now you're worried now with the frown you're lugging. Come to think your face would stink when deals around you. He's your father, what then happened? Did he ground you? You shouldn't flip on him, cause Bill is really cool. Matter of fact, the coolest seller in the school. He hooked up a trip to bring us all the laces. He volunteered to play on Santa Claus and Macy's. Child, you got the best pops anyone could have. Dylan's cool, super hip, you should be glad. Yeah, it seemed that Santa's wings was parallel with Dylan. But when Millie and him got home, he was more of a Billy. While she slept and he crept inside her bedroom. And he would toss a devil force her to give him head wings. Millie tried real hard to let this hell not happen. But when she fussed, he would just commence to slap. Yo, Dylan, man, Millie's been out of school for a week, man. What's the deal? I guess he was giving Millie Bruce's time to heal. Of course, he told us she was sick, and we believed him. And at the department store in Santa, we could see him. And as he smiled, his own child was at home plot. I walked the face of the church, he was going to knock him. When I got home, I found she had tried to call me. Mama, she had kicked to her head. How you so doing? So I. Got a cat, but she won't let it out. Oh, tough luck, cause the next check out. Waiting on the winds, he moves to the next. Searching for the cheese, looking for the text. In the big blue, in search of a skin. Grinning and laughing, laughing and grinning. Padlock Jody got the whole scene played. No knocking boots till she's 14K. Diamond in the back, sunroof top. Waiting for the credit cost, she go and shop. Jack plays the back, just knocking other stops. Cause now in the hood, he's got a fight. Till one thing came, Jody blew a spark. Found about Judy around the corner in the park. Flipping like a dipstick, hip to the news. Practice in the rain, fellow in the blues. Jack rolls the coffin and swift like a skate. Yo, Jody, yo, gotta go, gotta date. Padlock, Jody screaming, wait, wait, wait. Don't bury her, he replies, I'm keeping the faith. <laughs> Maceo on the cuts again, a, a, mm. little, a, little, a little little block of, of of De La Soul, you know what I'm saying? To get the to get the soul riveted while we start this dissection. Like I said, let's let's just discuss. Let's talk about it a little bit. Again, I, I pardon me, like I said, for starting starting discussion off the wrong way by by playing oodles or o's at the beginning. But again, we got to hear a little gem of that, and we're gonna talk about that in another round. But let's talk you about never, the you, you, 
You never have to apologize to play it. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, right, I, think, right. I, think, I don't think anyone will ever complain about that. I mean, it is. I, I'm so OCD about it. I was like, this is the singles category. We got to talk about singles. Hey, man, true. you got to preface it with something. And they preface the <laughs> album with that. So Yeah, yeah. it's true. And, and again, and actually, while it, wasn't, it wasn't a single. Let's say, like I said, it did show up on, on video games, which video games at that point in time were already a big, big, big deal. Should have been a single. Should have been, because I heard it on the radio a lot. You know what's you know what's crazy, man, is like I really wish they had made a video for Millie, man. Like it was it was the yeah. single. It was the it was Can the you imagine side. them making that video though? That would have been so dope though back then, man. I it would have worked in ninety one, man. They could have they could have made it. But it was so huh? tragic, but it was a dope sound. <laughs> But I, but I think the way the way things were in like the early '90s with the videos, like there was a lot of hardcore. You know, you had the, the coming of like a lot of hardcore stuff. I mean, the, come on, I mean, Brenda's got a baby was a video. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of Brenda, harsh yeah, yeah. stuff they that had videos out there. Yeah, I, you, know, you know, sl- yeah, slow down, but Brandon. I mean, there's some videos talking about some real stuff that was like, yeah. you know, still yeah. big hits and stuff. So I think that could have been a dope video, but you know, it wasn't in the budget. Because the messaging still plays out today. You know what I mean? It does. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. it does. Way ahead of his time, man. With that they were talking about it in, the, in the chat room. They're just saying some someone kind of they know somebody that kind of lived that story. This is not the first time again. This kind of stuff was addressed on, mm-hmm. on, you know, this is called on wax. You know what I mean? Am I, am I bugging? Or, or, or was the Nikki D song with Daddy? Don't know what I heard him. Did they talk about that as well, or was yeah. it she just pregnant? Was she it, got yeah, pregnant. Girl. She got pregnant. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's about. That was it. Okay, yeah, so Daddy wasn't doing nothing like this. Yeah, um, it wasn't like this. No. It wasn't like this. Thank goodness. It's certainly, yeah, again, it's certainly didn't end like this. So, you know. oh no. Well, you know what? You know what makes me think of it? it makes me put on my rock hat for a minute. There, there was a group uh, around this time. Around same thing. Around maybe like late eighties, early nineties. Aerosmith. I don't remember which album it was. Janie's got a gun. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I do remember yeah. That, yeah. Similar similar topic. You know, the daughter just mm-hmm. kind of had enough and mm-hmm. yeah. do what she got to do. And, and it, it was just a little. I think it's a little. We got to put the spotlight obviously on De La Soul for the obvious reason, right? But it's mm-hmm. nobody was doing that in hip hop at that time. Then you know what I'm saying? Like I thought, I thought Nikki D for a second that I was wrong, and that would have been later anyway. But this this topic, that's crazy. That's, that's well, Nikki D might have been ninety one. Nikki D might have been ninety one, but it, but it was the same time. The song was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the native tongue. Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I mean. mean that, that, there were a lot of videos back then that were kind of like hard hit. I mean, even look, even pop acts like like it, it's not quite the same, but like uh, when Madonna made Papa Don't Preach, right? Oh, right she made right. it come out in like right. 90, I mean, that that's a right. real you know talking about abortion and or not having a boy, you know, all that type right. of stuff. Like back then, that was like unheard of back then, you know, as far as a pop singer doing that's it. So crazy, man, I think man. that was the time when people were taking chances. I'm sorry, I mean, interrupt. Go ahead, though. Not at all. Not at all. Just, I mean, we're talking, we're talking about these these again. We're talking about four songs at the moment. We just happen to be talking yeah, about right. One. But while we're on the topic of four songs, can we just, I, I absolutely love a roller skating jam. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Forever, forever. forever it's, it, it was, it's Monday night, and that song comes on, and I feel like it's a full-blown Saturday. Like, yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it the video, or yeah, is it the it, song nah, that the gives song. off the, no, I'm saying, that they, that gives off the roller skating vibe? Uh, the, to me, like, well, the video made, uh, made it, like, the thing like that video should look like it was fun. Oh yeah. my god, it looks so much fun. But the, but the song, I, way before the video came out, I just got that always always they got that same feeling when I heard the song. It's just like, yeah. you know, like the what is it? The who's that? The BG sample? Who is that? The, the Chicago, Chicago, the Chicago sample, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's just like feel good. It's like it perfectly captures the vibe. And then of course, you know, you got it, you know, popping off with of Q-tips, like that voice, you know, like the flow and the voice. Yeah, and let's, let's not let's finish. not forget Vinya, Vinya Mojica. Vinya Mojica, yeah, mm-hmm. Vinya Mojica. I was gonna say like everything Ooh, was, was perfect, man. He killed that. I mean, that's yeah, that man. good, that good Saturday morning cleanup music. Oh yo. my god! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there's the, the I don't know if it's uh if you got the single, you got one of y'all got. I know one of y'all got the vinyl. There's like a seven mm-hmm. minute remix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the Saturday. Let's have fun type one. But they, mm, they just yep, keep, yo, much, yeah. that mm-hmm. shit. And I believe is it this the same time when Tip did Groove is in the heart? Might have been. Uh, yeah, when they might have been. Yeah, might have been. been. Yeah, been. 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 yeah. It, 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 I kind of think of those two records like when I'm playing them, I'll kind of play them after one another. But yeah, that yeah, was that's, that's what, what, a, what a time, man. And such a good record. Good record. I wanted to bring. I want. I wanted to bring up real quick, man. Like, so Ring 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 was not 
my, I know it was the first single. It wasn't my favorite, right? When I first heard it, but over the years, I, I like grew to like really enjoy it. And the funniest part about it, you know, much like this album, like, I don't know if you know, you guys know this about me, but I'm a very sarcastic person. <laughs> so this album may be the most sarcastic album like ever made in hip hop. <laughs> and it's just like, like to me, Ring 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 was such a, just a, just a, just asshole type song, dude. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, everybody, they had to remember, they weren't that, that, that far into their career to forget about what it was like trying to come up. So, so they know people <laughs> trying to shop the demo, but they were just like, man, we ain't got no time for that. And they making fun of each other. You got, who was it? Who was it? Mace gave out the number, you know, to, uh, to like, yep. um, Foss, Foss's number told her, you know, send the tape to him. And then they're like playing practical jokes on each other and talking, you know, hanging up on cast. It's just like hilarious to me when you think about it. It's kind of cold blooded, but, you know, the video I was dope too because I video thought was the same thing, because... you know, and I I used that uh just as in an asshole manner. I used that when you was first able to make uh, vo uh voicemail tones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that was it for years. I'm talking Nokia Nokia phones. Ain't nobody had a Nokia in forever. <laughs> yeah. Right. You gave him the hey, how you doing? Huh? That's what's up. Yep. <laughs> how you doing? Uh, again, very, yeah, very dope, those singles, these are all the songs that I gave with the representation of this particular project. And again, we're talking about the particular sophomore jinx that a lot of people expect from certain artists, groups, solo solo acts, whatever. They definitely were, were on that chopping block of being, you know, sort of labeled the sophomore jinx, whatever the case may be. Their choice to go a little bit left when everybody was expecting them to go right you know a cul-de-sac movie that's very notorious here on east beats and rhymes it was very 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 well executed because you have the fact that de la so is dead is the name of the title right so you're already like what like mm -hmm. i just had an amazing like debut project <laughs> amazing, amazing. i mean <laughs> you know de la so has to arguably be the most consistent rap group ever yeah mm. yeah yeah, yeah. Arguably, yeah. I, agree. I mean I agree. Just, why do you why do you say that why do you say that I mean, like I, I forget who said it. Might have been scared, scared or mal. They said, "I." Uh, everybody said they love all the Daylight albums, and I'm like, "Me too." And mm -hmm. I'm thinking about mm -hmm. just the times that they came out. Like balloon, balloon was over people's heads. You know what I'm saying? Right. A lot of mm -hmm. people started to like yeah. it later. Mm -hmm. The stakes is high right after that. Mm -hmm. Come on, man! And mm -hmm. it was so bugged out being that we were we were like neighbors. Like they, Paz and Mace lived equal distance from me during that, from the whole time I was in high school. I used to walk, have to walk past their crib to go to school. And, <laughs> you know, it was real you know, wild. Seeing them on Rap City and then seeing yeah. them <laughs> picking up the mail, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's wild. I was going to say, Gorilla, you know what really got me though? So they had that consistency with all those albums, right? But it was like a long break. Of you know yeah. label stuff or whatever, all that stuff before they came out with like the grind date. Now to me, that was on a whole different mm -hmm. label and everything. And grind date was so yeah. damn good. It was so impressive. Yeah. I was just kind of like, yo, I was like, do this, do these dudes ever make anything whack? Like I'm just kind of like, I'm like, nope. They've been they've been away for a minute. <laughs> I'm like, they've been away for a minute. You know what I mean? Like usually, usually when something like that happens, they come back and the song, the album's like, eh, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. they may have one good song, two good songs. That whole joint was fire, man. I was just like, these dudes yeah. are just they just different. You know it's dope, man, because it's it's like when you when you when you look at the three singles we just talked we just talked about, right? And then you look at them, they 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 attack different subject matters, and yeah. you go you, you start from there, and then you kind of look at from 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 that point of of that, to even to how you mentioned the grind, they and they they've been consistent throughout and have been able to attack topics and and make good music each and every time. They always mm -hmm. update their formulas, right? So like the beats are the beats are never dated. Like this, mm -hmm. like we're playing, we're playing this right now from ninety one, and it's still fire. It's you know what I mean? And, and 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 that's the that's the great thing about about De La Soul when we hear the music. They're able to, they remind me too of like they the way I kind of look at it. They're they're not the concept when we think of like superstars, so to speak, right? And what I mean mm -hmm. by that, it's kind of like to what you were just saying, Rev. Like these cats, you you see these cats in the neighborhood, you know who they are, you know their stars, but they're still personable so to so so to speak. you can actually kind of relate to de la soul right it's true it's true i think i think we're yeah, gonna I want, I want to real quick real quick i want to just ask everybody like so the fourth the third technically third fourth whatever you want to call it single you know was keeping the faith you know so yeah i mean you know it was, it was about like some chick that you know she won't give it up 
<laughs> until, you, <laughs> until you spend a lot of money, you know, all that type of stuff, right? And of course, they were pretty young during that time. So it's kind of like a, you know, there was a thing that was being talked about. But what did y'all ever think about like that? that I mean, it, yeah, again, it's a very honest single, but it's like, what did y'all ever think about that? Especially the fact that they probably could have either done Millie or that is like the video, but they did a video for keeping the faith. Like, what did y'all think about that song or the video? I mean, I, mean, I love that record. And yeah. once I heard it, when I got a little bit older, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, so now they, you know, this is what I, I, I wish I was on it like that. Deal. Maybe not, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> things might have turned out different. But I mean, yeah. I felt that was a a, a great sing follow up single, you know what I'm saying, for the for the album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that joint was fun, man. It's, it's a funny song too, man. It's like it's, it's, yeah. it's this is a it's, it could be a comedy album, man. It's <laughs> oh, totally, totally, totally. But they they sneak in the message with the good beats. Hold on, hold on. Speak, speaking of sneaking messages, we we gonna we gonna wrap up like this this little segment right here, which we call the singles portion of the discussion. Like I said, we were talking the singles off of De La Soul is Dead, which basically was ring ring ring, ha ha hey, <laughs> roller skating jam named Saturdays. Millie pulled a pistol on Santa and keeping the faith. These were all, again, as Scan mentioned, different sounding material that all were classified as the songs that were out there to, to grab more listeners and reel them in, aka the singles. Let's talk about how, how uh, Triple C just mentioned the phrase, you know, sneak, sneaking in the message and stuff like that. Let's talk about round number two. This is the lyrics portion of tonight's game. That's right, lyrics at the bottom right here, lyrics. L let's talk about how De La Soul to this day Keep it 100% sharp on the mic. Let's let's talk about how in th in this particular album, how Maceo stepped up a lot on, on, yeah, on the mic. Pause, you know what I'm saying? Which and, and it's and it's fire. And and then let's just talk about the overall. Like I said, maybe that message getting hit, not hidden in there, but again, what they were known for. Let, let, let's talk lyrics for a second. Are there, are there any songs that stand out to anybody off the bat? I have songs lined up ready to go. Does anybody want to talk about a particular song off the album that maybe reflects the lyrics to them in a particular kind of case? It is in the BK Lounge. My <laughs> uh, first choice, DJ. My first one, Good River and DJ Good River. He got, he, he got it. He read my mind. Let's, let's talk about that. After the fact, let's talk about the lyrics on Biddy's in the BK Lounge of De La So Is Dead. Yo, man, let me uh, make some Captain Crunch, all right? Yo, man, you have any milk? Yo, what I don't know. What day is it? You don't know? I'll tell you. Well, you don't know? Well, it was a Wednesday. Me and boss always kind of hungry. Like two eggs and a sloppy slice of lettuce what? and a glass of milk and some cookies. Spotted in the mist with the BK logo. What we said, well, what do you know? The chick thought I was trying to play fly because I had a pair of blue jeans on. Young girl, won't you take my order? She said, yeah, yeah but right, right now, now I'm sort of busy. So Don't you see me trying to put this bandaid on my finger? Lingering, I can tell. She's a BK mademoiselle. With the uniform and bottom bell and some jelly Seven stuff on her sleeve. Look to this, cause I had no name tag on my collar. Could be pissed cause she's clocking 245 an hour. And then boss all hollered. Girl, you, you better, better make, make this quick. quick. She said, I ain't your girl and I ain't your chick. I had an idea of lickety split, took my hat off and that was it. Dreadlocks falling all over me. And then I said, yeah, now we'll see. And oh, with quick velocity, honey was mesmerized. Ain't you that guy? Ain't you that girl? They are so right, no Tracy Chapman. Why don't you come over to the counter and write me out an autograph? Ha ha ha, I had to that. She was quick with the bitch just to get that autograph. But me and Hog just laugh and laugh. What's the name of that song you sing? Living in a fast car set. Forget about the order I made. I'll go get a slice of pizza instead. Biddy's in the BK lounge, all they do is beg and they scrounge. Biddy's in the BK lounge, the Biddy's in the BK lounge. Biddy's in the BK lounge, all they do is beg and they scrounge. Biddy's in the BK lounge, the Biddy's in the BK lounge. Super big. <laughs> Biddy's in the BK lounge. <laughs> this is oh, a classic man. track right here. This so is a good much. example. Mm -hmm. I think, the, in fact, if you want to break it down for us, Rev, real quick, what made you pick this particular record to talk about lyrics? Because it's, I think it's pretty obvious, but w w what is it about this song to you? I mean, well, first of all, all three of them rap, you know what I'm saying? And you just <laughs> want to include that. And it was the the beat changed, and mm -hmm. it was just like they was playing the dozens 
with mm-hmm. chicks that would have normally played them or did play them until they found out they was Daylight Soul. And yeah. I can, this just sound like, I think the BK Lounge was AKA Amityville High School Cafeteria or something, you know? They were good at what, with making I heard, I, about shit that I, was I, actually I, happening. I saw an interview and I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I think they, they, they used to hang out at Burger King. Is there a Burger King? There's like a local Burger King that, that, that was popular or some shit. And they said that they, this was the meeting spot. It must and, be, yeah. Every hood got is that spot. Every hood got right, like, you know, that club pass mark. Mm-hmm. They, well, they had the, they had the, the Burger King lounge. <laughs> <laughs> it's one year. I remember, I remember seeing that somewhere. If you remember where Busy B Mall was at. I do. So there was a Burger King right near there, and that's where they used to work at. That's how they met. They met at working while well, working at Busy B. That might like, that might be. Yeah, Busy's man, a- I, I, yeah. That message just like it's I, like just like Good Rev said, man. The dozens, especially I personally think Paz is you know versus the funniest to be. I mean, they're all great. Yeah. Paz, <laughs> like the back and forth between Tracy him and, Chapman. Between him and <laughs> no, no, that was the first one. But I'm talking that second one when Paz was going at when he was the the manager. And the, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and Shoshana and whoever Shoshana. You know, they, were, they were coming, yeah. they were coming at them, and they man, they were going everybody knows Shoshana. Yeah. Shoshana. Yeah, yes. yeah, Shoshana. Yo, Shoshana. See, they too busy looking at these girls. Yo, he was, he's yeah, supposed to be the manager. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. It was just like the, the, the it was like so realistic about like just chicks yeah. snapping on dude and him snapping on them, and they know each other from like the same school, and he knows about her man who's a drug dealer and all this stuff, man. It was just like <laughs> he, I can just picture the her whole man's a drug line. dealer, but she at Burger King. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. The, kid is, the kid is so skinny, yeah, he living fat. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god that, that's just a classic that, that's one of the funniest like hip-hop songs i've ever heard man I, I laugh every time i listen to it man it's just classic, classic. Yo, shout out to cruise one in the building obviously you know what I'm saying oh, oh, regular, not, man. regular mm-hmm. listen I, I think that's a great example thank you rev of, of, of a dope song like i said that that definitely highlights lyrics um even concept in that particular in that particular case is there another song anybody you want anybody else wants to bring up? Because again, I got another one, you know, loaded up, ready to go. Is there anybody? Man, I got, yeah. I got a one. Oh, who, 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 who? Porridge, you got a lot of them. I was gonna <laughs> say, yeah, he's he's porridge. For me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hobo laid it out for us. Let's go ahead and let the people know. Peas porridge off that day last week. That basically under the lyrics flag they were talking about right now. Let's see if he's right. Yo, Jig. Yo, what up, G, man? Yo, man, you heard about that new club called Adona Hell, bitch? Yeah, man, I heard it's kind of fly. Yo, man, man Rock, Kim, and Dale, I be out there all the time. Word up. Oh, the time. Yo, Dale, I, yo, those punk kids, man. They punk, yo, man, those kids are whack, man. Straight up, boo, whack, whack, whack. Yo, man, but yo, that button, yo, that was kind of fly, man. The power was slim. Word up. Slender, it was. But yo, forget about that, man. Yo, I think you might have pluck one, pluck two, and the potholes. Yo, man, they fell over the brothers, man. Yes, they did, man. Yo, yo, they were straight up pop, man. I'm telling you, get them fat. Yo, check it out, B. Yo, yo, I'm actually going to party at the club, yo, man. I'm gonna bet you them Oh, yo, yo, I ain't so let the brothers show up, man. Let the brothers get up. I'm going to jack on the niggas. Run up, boy. My name, my name, my name is the pasta. Now I like, I like, I like to plug the real thing. So loose, so loose, so loose with the tap dance. The funk, the funk, funky, funky stuff I bring. My tribe, my tribe, my tribe is known as native tongue. Consist, consist, consist the jungle quest of nothing. We'll play, we'll play, we'll play, we'll play with rival radio. And all, and all, and also by some foul brother. The piece, the piece, the piece, porridge never failed. It kept, it kept, it kept its calm and style and merry. But late, but lately, Looney's acting real bold. Can sit in luxury, my apple cranberry. Girls watch and watch and watch me dance to keep in touch. A home, a home, a home, it's just to plan tricks. The rip, the rip, the realize the native tongue is rolling strong. And we'll start and in the mega mix. Yo, Miss Stink. Yo, Maxwell, what's up? You heard about what happened at the Donut Hill Yo, yo, I was there and the daylight kids was fighting. Yo, they was wild. Word, the whole thing happened in front of my face. Yo, they was on the dance floor, right? Some kids walked up to them and said something about hippies being punk. Yo, and the chubby one plus. Yeah. Question. And that's if only I can ask this question. Can I? Yes, you can. Why do people 
people think just because we speak peace, we can't throw no joints. I, I don't know. Man, we can't throw no joints. <laughs> Yo. Oh, man. Yeah, Yo, why do they always want to test them? that shit. <laughs> Like, it sounds like Prince Paul, man. Size. This album wouldn't sound like it do if it wasn't for Prince. Thank you, yeah. Guru. Yeah. Because yeah. that, that, there's, uh, there's two drum samples, the mm-hmm. vocal, the horn, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the loop. <laughs> and and that change that comes when they change, that with that, which that's Oh, yeah, crazy. later on. Yeah. That's it. That, that's, that, that record is crazy. When he talked about <laughs> yeah, the man. fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Prince, Prince Paul, Prince Paul is pretty good, huh? Yeah, hold on, hold on. We 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 gonna talk. We gonna talk about Prince Paul. Hold on, hold on. I gotta take control. I gotta take control. Prince Paul is gonna get his flowers in the next round. Let's stick to the lyrics for a second. That's what's up. The 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 peace porridge definitely does dope example of some dope production. But like I said, I could definitely see what Hope was talking about in terms of the wordplay and 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 the flow. The 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 Long Island stamp. If, if you want to call it that, that was occurring at that at this point in time, EPMD, it's uh, uh, Eric B and Rakim, Dayla, it's, 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 it's insane. And yes, I'm giving props to Long Island right now because I think for Mrs. Tuned in in the chat room. I see you. Shout out to Ike. <laughs> Sons of Berserk. <laughs> yeah, Sons of Berserk. You know what I'm saying? Sons of Berserk. You wild. You know what I'm saying? My favorite, <laughs> my favorite group of all time. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Rumble Stillskin. You know what I'm saying? Rumble Stillskin. There you go. Rumble Stillskin. You know what I'm saying? My favorite group of all time. I, I, no, I don't, I'm not, right after H2O, you know what I'm saying? Hard to obtain, you know what I'm saying? Hard to obtain. Ill-gotten, you know what I'm saying? Triple C said JVC Force. Public uh, enemy. Too. I, was, I was being sarcastic. Y'all being for real. Now. Let's stop. Let's stop. Y'all being solo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gay solo. All in my business, you know what I'm saying? All in my business. <laughs> We, we, I, 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 I got one more in the chamber. Let me let me know if you all agree as far as the lyrics are concerned. I, I, I felt like this one just caught my attention in terms of, of the wordplay. Can, can can we get a little love of that De La Soul is Dead under the lyrics category for past the plugs? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this time, come and put it in mellow. I am no ass, pasta new, plug one to the whole race, rhyme on a tour, smart and mature, dispatch obscure themes with a mad face, tall dog and lean, was once 19, now I'm one year older with reason, clean thoughts and draws, rhyme flow never stores, and yes, 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 stores, and in this season, the soul reach hot planes, they even reach soul train, but Don don't like rap, so that won't happen, fame we don't lust, God we do trust, Arsenio distance, but the crowd kept clapping, blessed with soul flight, so turn off your right over exposure will bring about a clear soul don't push but pile to this here new style and excuse me y'all while i fill my pot holes had to get some dave in there oh man man. i love that joint i think the production is 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 super dope but Mm -hmm. listening it again in hindsight today i'm like it's a very simple production on that one Mm -hmm. um those are eric b and rakim drums am i I bugging a a, a loop right is that or is is it someone else Huh? But that's what that's what made yeah. it dope. What made it yeah. dope. It was so simple. It was oh no, I loved it. I, I, like I said, listening to it in hindsight, I was like, like damn, this was like really easy. Like it, it was just like a, like drums. It's which, the same drum loop. As, it's the same drum loop, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, and, and I, I I love that drum again. I think it falls very dope on the lyrics category. Uh, we played three. You know, off I'm the album. Right I'm just gonna mention now. I, I know you can't play them, whatever. But two that I really love, like lyrically, right? So one of them is "Let Let Me In" because it's just you know to play on the 
you know, the play on words with the the act mm -hmm. that they're talking about and all that yeah, stuff. Was funny, yeah, but but if I want you, to, yeah, can what you say? Yeah, I put that song on productions on my list. Yeah, yeah, that joint's that joint's banging. But but as far as like just lyrics, my choice, you know, would have to probably be Afro and Hi Fi Connection, man. Because that mm -hmm. joint, mm -hmm. it's the flow. Like to me, that feels like a precursor to um rock cocaine flow. Like the way they kind of like the, the mm. beat and the and, and then and the fact that they take that whole persona. Let's, right. let's, let's, give, let's, let's give let's give the people a little bit off that. Why not? Let's give them a little bit. We talking about lyrics. Let's go ahead and give them a, an example. That Afro connections at a high five in the eyes of a hoodlum. This is dedicated to all those hardcore acts. Yeah, you know them brothers that we used to look up to that fell the fuck off. And now they doing all that R&B. Rocker. You mean rhythm and blues? No, no. rapping rap blues. <laughs> Ain't click what my dick chick. I smack a fish if it thinks my connection ain't thick, thick. Headed like a punk whip. I travel miles with a rhythmic lip. I rock an afro in 83G, yo. And spray the sheen so I get a so glow. I play the corner tough. And me and Mace pull puffs on the blunt. High five is what I want. So I puff a blunt. I don't front. I get flip, get a stiff. And I go hump a step like a pimp pro. Now, man, a super hump. That's cool, because I'm still an afro, bro. Yeah, I'm live, but my life is hectic. Every hour, every minute, every second. I keep a level head to stay down to earth, because I've been an afro since yeah. birth. Now I hold my crotch cause I'm top notch I run up up like Sasquatch And I like to eat live crap I got five people to scab But you can find me directly on the app You niggas think me, well who's that? My breath never smells whack I eat the watermelon and take tap Before I kiss myself for always jump back No Jesus tried to step And you know that <laughs> out to me i'm not gonna lie that stands out pretty fly yeah mm -hmm. that was I'm on the single of ring 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 yep that was on the B side yeah mm -hmm. that um to me i'm not gonna lie that, that that one i feel like we're gonna move on to round number three i think we, i think we gave the lyrics portion a good, a good example of why these guys fall under the five my category but already before we do that can i ask uh what did arsenio hall do to them Oh man, you don't remember me, myself, and I when he had them on there? So yeah. when they, on their first album, they you know, obviously me, myself, and I was the big. No, I think he just called him, he introduced him as rap hip hop's hippies. He might have oh. cut them off a little early. He might have cut them off early with the because it's at the end of the show when the credits yeah. were running. But that yeah. kind of, that was kind yeah. of a normal thing though. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they didn't know that, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, but he introduced him as hippies, and then yeah, I think it was at the end of the show, and maybe maybe they ran over time or whatever, but the credits started rolling about they were rhyming and I guess they were just like, man, fuck our city hall. It's crazy because Arsenio Hall had a lot of hip hop on yeah, his he show. He did. He did. A lot. Did. I just tried to call my uncle because he was he was there. <laughs> At the he, he was with them when they did Arsenio. Oh I think I, I think he said it at it like sort of a with no malice behind it. He was like, you know, the the, the newest thing on the block, you know, the, the, the hip hop hippies, they lie so like, you know, one of those kind of things. Ren and ten, ladies and gentlemen, Ren and ten. Yeah. Ren and ten. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were a few cats that went at Arsenio back in the day, man. I remember Q went at him too, man. Like the cats. I mean, you, you gotta get it's a, it's a testament to how strong Arsenio Hall was at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. True. yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, his his claim to like these guys are hip hop hippies, definitely not that they didn't already have that label, but definitely was more like again again solidifying like oh well I mean Arsenio mm -hmm. said they didn't say nothing was wrong with it so that's they probably why it made them even more mad. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. But the hippies of not to mention the fact that they hate, not to mention the fact that they hate that song. So <laughs> I think I think Cassette <laughs> Bay knows the quote. Cassette Cassette Bay is that is that the actual quote? 
Kasebe says, uh, I think the quote was hippies of hip hop. And again, it, I don't think that sounds foul, but again, it was like, like why would you say that? Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah they're trying to leave that uh, image yeah. alone. <laughs> yeah, Mr. September said he played them, that he went to commercial after he announced them. Oh, um, I went to commercial. I thought it was the end of the show. Dang, that's rough, boy. That's real rough. And Maybe because it's, it's, it's true. They, I mean, Arsenio Hall gave hip hop a hip hop a lot of love, like a, a lot, lot of love. love. Uh, he had hip-hop the first going for Christ's sake. Man, when we're talking about, see, some people may remember some, some you know, from other countries. That's why we got viewers from other countries may not know. When we had domestic TV, right? We had like what, like seven to eight channels, maybe nine that were like your basic overall channels that everybody had these exact same channels this is before cable and if you had cable then you were special but everybody definitely had these fucking or channels stealing it. or stealing <laughs> it right? but as far as like free yeah as far no he's absolutely right as far as free is concerned free television off off the airways with antennas on your tv that's when we had antennas like you couldn't catch hip-hop on yeah. any any of the 10 or 9 11 stations that existed except as a musical act on certain shows, but definitely you could definitely catch hip hop on like Arsenio Hall. I mean, he had more than hip hop acts on his show too, but like he yeah. he was notorious for like having just yeah. just no no mm. just regular hip hop shit on his show all the time. And yeah. if you know anything about those kind of shows, that's like booking an act. That means they were spending yeah. money on booking hip hop acts and you know putting them up in a hotel and everything and being like you have your what five ten minutes not even you know depends on barnell hill sure. man barnell hill austin hall was uh Josh, um johnny carson he was <laughs> he, he was a black johnny carson yeah. yeah yeah man don't don't none of y'all know barnell hill come on man martin of course I didn't know. I didn't know he was diving into into the TV bags. You got to listen. Do I, 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 I do want to get, get the catfish from the lake and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Want to, I want to. I do want to segue into again into into the, the last track that you just played right now, uh, Mal, which was the the Afro Connections. I, I felt like it was such a, a well produced track. Let's talk about round number three, the production portion of tonight's discussion. <laughs> Let's talk about De La Soul's dad's production. We got to give it up to De La Soul. They do a lot of their production as well. Everything's in-house, but we got to give flowers as well to the man that we know is responsible for a lot. I don't know if he's responsible for certain songs by themselves or whatever the case may be, but it's all labeled as De La Soul. And he was definitely part of that circle. Let's give, you know, talk about one time about Prince Paul. And again, he's responsible I, for the group. Plug, plug four. Exactly. Yeah. Plug four. No, I, again, I, again. Today, the climate might feel a little different. That's why I kind of like, you know, respectfully back then, definitely one of the group, you know, he, he kept referring to, to everything as we. We had a new sound. We had the such and such. Mm. We had to fight. Like, it's always we, we, we. Have yo, to put yo, it, Ju- mm-hmm. Jules, yeah. yo, Jules, I think for their first three albums, that was Prince Paul was like the All of it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah all of mm-hmm. But I think after that, was, six, six is high. Six, six is high. Six, six, six is high is what they did on their own. You know what I mean? That's yep. when they started mm-hmm. doing their own production by themselves without Prince Paul. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and I've, I've read an interview with St- where Prince Paul literally says Six is high is his favorite De La Soul album. So he wasn't on it. Even though he wasn't yeah, on it. He wasn't on oh, it. And Amazi, just a yeah. just Oh, a yeah. They, yeah. They're yeah. still cool with each other. Oh, yeah. They're super cool. You know what I'm saying? But it is hard. Pause, pill to swallow. You know when when you know you you're that guy, and all of a sudden they're like, uh, "No, you don't have to come to the session this week." You right, it's, it. it's awkward, right. and it can get very ugly, and and not even on a, on a mean thing, just a hurtful thing. Like, ah, mm-hmm. that, but, but I don't mm-hmm. think that's ever happened. If it did, they kept it private. But in, mm-hmm. as far as production is concerned, is is there a song that anybody wants me to refer to just to talk about how dope again the production is? By De La Soul, including Prince Paul, obviously. Uh, if not, I got some in the chamber ready to go. What, what, is there something that someone wants to talk about? Yeah, mom mentioned let me it. Let, let, let me in. Yeah, let me in. Yeah, you did, did, did mention that last one. Let, let, let's play a little bit of Let Me In. If, if, if that's the second time that's come up, so I definitely think it needs to get played. Let's play a little De La Soul is Dead. That let, let Me In. Oh, ah, oh.
news I got eyewitness. Good news I got eyewitness. Two men a hip lifted into my phenomenon. Um, days with the quickness. 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 One sweat, two sweat, three motions. What motions? What could it be? She, she, watching you. Who, me, me? Hey, Velveeta got you cut. Uh, ain't no locking up now. Just the symmetric to your bottom. Ain't no locking up. <laughs> Shit, listen to that Catholic cool. Push panic, the button, and freeze. It's for amen. J's for the Jennifer O'Dennys. Oh, please, oh, please. Let, let, so let, 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 let me in. Let, let me in. Let, 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 let me in. Oh, who a... used it first? Um, oh, yeah, who used um, the beat first? Uh, EPMD or De La? I think oh, De La Pepper. first. <laughs> well, Pepper, well, yeah, that did they De use La. that version? De did they use that version, though, Rev? But well, it was a different version of Tramp. There's a couple uh, different Rampage? versions, though. Come on. Yeah. I, I, I slow down, so, baby. Yeah, Rampage was, but I mean... So Rampage came out in a, I think that came out in 90. So it came out earlier. No, I think it was earlier. the same year. No, no, the third album came out in 1990. Their first was 87, second 88, third and 90. Hmm. And that was the third it album. Might be, I I I think you're I think you're right. But, uh, 90, but, yeah. but I will but I will tell you this, that, that tramp sample, that tramp sample has been used forever in hip hop. I mean, yeah, so, yeah, I yeah. mean so everybody used Trump Trump Pepper used the first, yeah. You're right. Yeah, I mean there's been people use it way before all both of them. So, you know, it's just a classic hip hop sample yeah. by that point. I mean, there's five of them in there. I get I, I was counting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say real quick though, with with uh, you know, um one of the funniest parts about that song is just like the cuts, <laughs> like the little end of the interludes. And, you know what's this in your pocket? That <laughs> like, hey, hey, you know, like, like all these like these double on un, double on time to like like right, you know, right. Oh, that's, like, that's, what, that's, what, that's the genius yeah. of it. That's the genius yeah. of it. Can I yeah. can I ask a question? What, what what is what is the the constant reference and drop of? And I can't be your lover. Like who? What is? Why do you keep dropping that? Like, slick Rick. <laughs> Like, I know, but like, just... I just feel like it's a private joke or some shit. Like, like I think, I think that's what, what I think it's a it private is. joke that we don't know. They drop that yeah, shit. Just like, like, just, like the, just like the Crocker, the Crocker sample, the Crocker sam for sampling a curse yeah. word. It's, it's, just it's, like the first, it's, I just want to know if it's the first version of A minor. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it was, yeah. was yeah. getting at some, are they trying to get at somebody that can't be your lover? Were they going yeah. at LL? Were they going at, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm just, I'm just maybe I'm putting too much yeah. into it. I just feel like, because if you think about what he, what he said in Lottie Dottie, so like the, ver the version of it using Lottie Dottie, I mean, I don't know, I just think it was That's the last line. Your wrinkle, so and with your wrinkle, yeah. yeah. That's fine. And, if it's, and with your, and with your wrinkle, I can't be. Yeah, with your lover, lover exactly. <laughs> so, is, there another song, is there another song that speaks to y'all beat-wise? Let me ask the producers in the room. Scan, is there, mm -hmm. is there a song that, 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 that speaks to you beat-wise on this album? I, I mean, everything really, but I mean, you, you can do... Uh, Fantastic, fantastic B. Is that am I saying it wrong? Well, fanatic of, fanatic of the B word. Sorry. Yeah. Fanatic of the B word. I, I, I like, like fanatic of the B word. Um, let's let, let's let's talk about that real quick. I mean, let's play it real fast, and we'll then we'll talk about it real fast, and we'll talk about baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I sleep in the house. Quick <laughs> daddy, Mr. Long in the house. My man, the dress in the house. You know what I'm saying? Here we love in the house. Long pass and loose stuff. Prince Paul, the immigrant Lucian in the house. The house ready bear. Ha, <laughs> Mike. Come on, everybody. Got it going on. Swinging overhead. Come on, everybody. Do the baseball. Come on. Come on. We gon' swing over here. Swing over there. One, one of the cap, the cap, forward is the mantra of the chant, chant, the plan, plan, you slap, slap, will it to the walker of the beast, beast, smoke your blood, but close your drapes, drapes, if we get fine, my police, don't worry, yo, I got the papes, papes, socks, it is the talk that I tell, the tell, the tell from the lady who's fat, fat, Chris made the dope beat, but don't go beat, peeps,
see them talking about it in the chat room, man. I can in the building. See the scanners, they're going back and forth. What is it about those drums that that, that just go make this song go so hard? And as you mentioned in the chat room, they don't they don't know what you just got said. It's been used a bunch of times. Like like, but what is it about this time? The kick. I think it's the kick. Mouse says the kick. Ike said the snare. I think it's it's it's. For me, this drum loop has been used millions of times. I, it's escaping me the name of the break right now, and I, I, I can't remember, but um, I think it's the way you use it, right? Because if you speed it up, because this is sped up just a little bit from the original, so if you speed it up or slow it down, it kind of gives you a different effect, but it's definitely like a boom back neck, a neck snap kind of kind of drum break. Mm -hmm. So when you when you when you kind of like use it correctly it's like it's almost it's instantaneous like it's going to work with, with everything if you know how to use it correctly and then like i was just telling i in in the break itself if you listen to it there's actually like three different snares right so and what i mean by that is if you know a real drummer a real drummer will tell you they never play the same snare more than once right because it's live so if you listen to the actual break you can hear okay this number one snare is from the second time he played it from the third time he played it you know mm -hmm. so so I still have to say this this just this demonstrates their dopeness, I think. And then also when the track even started, you could tell they yelling and having a good time, and all of that came through on the record, man. Yeah, that energy. Yeah, man. Yeah, all of it came yeah. through. Yeah. yeah, man. And the bass line, the bass line is beautiful too, man. The bass line yeah. just kind of it just yeah. feels yeah. like the, the, the speakers, you know what I mean? It's just dope. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh man, love like many song. of the many of their joints, like uh before. The actual lyrics come in is like a whole different type of beat. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a genius too, man. Like, like, like again, kind of touching back, right? And and we we talked about this during the Rock Kim episode. Max put that there. So we talked about this during during that episode where we're talking production with Rock Kim, and that was 1990. This is the following year, and mm. look at what a stellar difference it is as far as the way it's composed, arranged, mixed, and put together. It's put together in such a way that it's 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 a for, it's a forever album, forever singles on there. It's it, it's crazy, you know what I mean? Thank you, Kasepi. That's right. And I was going to say, um, the sample is "Get Out of My Life, Woman." The other oh. version. There's there's two versions of that song, so this is a different version. The other version is another drum break that you know also. I, I just love the name of that song or the name of that break. That's a crazy name. Get out of my life, woman. <laughs> you remember that song? <laughs> Uh, maybe I, I, at this very moment, no. But I did, U cool. UMCs used it too. UMCs used it. Get out okay. my life, woman. Oh, okay. I think I know what you're talking about. That <laughs> I just again, I, I don't pay attention to a lot of the titles. It's more like like a, like you recognize it again. Everybody's even different names for breaks. Some people call it the name of the break the actual sample or the, the record or whatever. But <laughs> get out of my life, woman. I'm gonna remember that one forever. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 it's home differently. It's home differently. Yeah. Hey, Jules. One thing I was gonna say. I mean, you know, fortunately, you already played it. But my favorite, one of my favorite beats, if not my favorite beat, is Oodles. So to me, yeah. You know what I mean? You already played it, but I mean that. that I did. Production, I, you know, I, that's, why, that's why I'm mad at myself a little earlier too, because I yeah. definitely had that in my production. Mm -hmm. category round number three conversation back so let's just talk about it because we didn't get a chance to talk about it earlier but oodles of uh um, excuse me uh noodles of, of, of noodles oodles i keep saying noodles, noodles of o's <laughs> oh, ramen noodles of o's <laughs> you know i had ramen noodles tonight i had ramen noodles tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know you know you know you know what's, you know, you know, you know, you know, was ill about that beat right so like you know at the very beginning it starts with that like that heartbeat that do do mm -hmm. do do that beat is actually that is actually going through the whole song like mm -hmm. they put layers of other like instrumentation on yeah. top of it, but and, and then when they end the song, they take all that out. You still hear the do do mm -hmm. do like that. Is, so it, it just shows you how well put together, how how well produced that amazing. What a dope song! Song, to song set like, off you know? the album. What a dope song to yeah. set off the album. It's, it's a like, perfect, perfect after the again, intro. Yeah. After the intro, you got you got this dope song, and I'm waiting for 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 the good rep to come back. Unfortunately, his computer crashed. He's waiting for it to restart right now. But since we are talking about production. And I, this is why I wanted Rev to be here, but we can still talk about it. He catch up. We got to talk about the skits, and the skits definitely yeah. fall in the production. They, they have to produce yes. skits, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. before we do that, before we do that, I just want to say that the, the fact that that the biz sample is in is in Oodles is is dope to me yeah. as well. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. The the the, cut, the cutting part. Yeah. Oh man, mm -hmm. it's so perfectly placed too, man. 
Oh, there, there was no no ceiling to what you could do at that point in time in terms of layering. These guys weren't even chopping yet, right? Am I, am I wrong? Were they not chopping it with these? They layering? weren't chopping, but again, that that layering is, is that bomb. That's that bomb squad style again, right? Of mm-hmm. of layer of of because if you look at like this album, right? You go back to a lot of a lot of a lot of the albums around this time. You're talking songs with like five, six, seven, eight samples in them, where I would say more so producing now, you might have three samples in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If 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 that, you know, but the way they were layering back then with, with all the samples they were using, songs, I mean, if you if you run through it, five, six, ten, twelve yeah. records used mm-hmm. to make the song. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh cassette bass, they play the one where they found the cassette in the <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, hysterical by itself. <laughs> hey, what do you got there, Coxnot? You can hear them laughing. You can hear you hear them laughing in the background, like while they're doing these guys, like you know. <laughs> and Malcontent's <laughs> right. Uh, that's just along Mr. playing like yeah. the the, the yeah. character Roid. I believe the character's yeah. name is Hemorrhoid. Right. Hemorrhoid. That's <laughs> <laughs> insane. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> but, but, He's but like, I'm hemorrhoid. I'm the leader. <laughs> I am. Yo, no. the good rev is back. Rev. The penis. <laughs> rev, we 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 just we just talked about uh, oodles of O's. Almost messed that up. And we're we're getting ready to have the conversation. I'm glad you back just in time. We're gonna talk about the skits right now because we're still talking about production. But we feel like the skits fall under the production of producing these skits. We're we're, we're talking intros. We we we. we I mean, Casabe wants to know about the trash. You know, finding the album. We talk about getting. Uh, I forget which characters want to get smacked around the most, but he's getting <laughs> the guy who likes the album. Yeah, the guy who likes the album. Was he Jeff? Oh, 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 you talking about the no. guy in the crew? Yeah, the no, guy Jeff in the crew. Yeah, that's a little scrawny. I kind of yeah. like it, man. I kind of like it. What do you know about and, this? And, and then, the and then Mace, Mace is always taking up. You didn't have to hit him like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> there, 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 there's a lot of... Yeah, oh, well, 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 right? which, which skit? There's a lot of skits, so we have to be very specific. Mm-hmm. You know, shout, shout out to uh, Third Eye Assassin back in the building. We ain't seen you in a minute, Playboy. Third Eye Assassin in the building. You got um, to shout skit? out Don Newkirk. Don Newkirk. Rest, yes. rest in peace to Don Newkirk. Rest in peace. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Rest in peace, yes. Don. Yes. Um, you know what, Rev? I, I, since I guess I was waiting for you to come back for this particular topic, which which skit do you think needs a little airtime right now? Do you think uh, in terms of uh, the production portion of, of De La Soul is that? Oh man, I mean, my favorite like the- skit is probably might might be before Biddy's, but um, <laughs> Prince Paul and on the WR on this. That's a dedication to the Biddy. Mm-hmm. Which is the one that ends with the skit where you're like, uh, it's him, it's the it's the it's the dark skin one. Like, which one with the glasses? It's like, yeah, they ain't ugly. Want the nappy, want the nappy head. <laughs> 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 He ugly, and then like, fuck you, bitch. That's what she yeah, yeah, they put the NWA, the NWA. Yeah, the NWA. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, bitch. They kept I think going. It's, it's kept going. It's not for sk- um, skit two. You can start because the other one is not. They're all uh, amazing. Another. Which one? So what do you? Cap, caps, and, caps and control is good. I mean, they're all amazing. Yeah. Right? Which one? Let me switch. Do we need to play any skits or no? <laughs> yeah, play them all. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna randomly pick. It's only 25 seconds. Come on. The first skit. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got, I, well, I, I count the intro. <laughs> okay, let's play the first skit. 25 seconds. Hey, that. Oh, this is so corny, man. This show's so little cool. man. Man, this is man. Tell right. me, what are they saying, man? Yo, yeah, man, saying? I kind of like it, man. You, what? You bugging? <laughs> What do you know about music, hamster penis? Oh, <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, oh, put the tape back in, Aiden Ward. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, man. Aiden Ward. Turn the tape. Get two. <laughs> yeah, turn the tape. That's the other ill thing is the, is the yeah. boom. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Turn the tape. <laughs> that consistency from three feet high. Yep. Oh, that, the old schoolness of just of, I just remember being grade school and you had the book and it was on t- it was a tape recorder where they did that to make to make the thing to make that sound, bro. Turn, yeah. Yeah, let, let me ask you a question. Good, no one to turn the fucking page. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me ask you a question. This is 1991. Okay. Were were other albums dropping skits like this? Were, were, I mean, because I remember NWA skits as well. 
but but like this level of 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 dedication to like an entire project. Mm-hmm. I think Red Man, just Red Man. <laughs> I, feel like this, level, I, feel like, I feel like this was yeah, the it, it, it was unprecedented. Hold on, hold on, one person at a time, one person at a time. What's that? Yeah, hobo. I said, I was saying, I feel like this was a time when skits were a thing. Like, yes. Yeah, people had skits in their albums and, at this point. It was part of it and it, it was expected. Like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like some, it wasn't weird, it didn't feel out of place. Um, I think now, you know, we don't get we don't get skits so much. I think because, I, and I think part of it is that they don't really now they don't really look at it as a whole a holistic project and release like they did back then. I think they put time and effort yeah. into this to make it, you know, a cohesive project, and and it came across, and that's why it's it's a forever record. Yeah, yeah. Back then they had concepts. Now today, just quick, fast. Well, well, well the concept, yeah, yeah, yeah. The concept too about how, how about about the fact that they're shitting on their own album, you know, via other characters about an album called De La Soul is Dead. Like it's it's like mm-hmm. again the, the expectation of like what is going on. Again, I mean, I think it was Mal who said it. The first single, hey hey hey, ring well, ring ring ring, right? It's kind of like wait, what yeah. is this? It's like a pop song, but they're being like so sarcastic and such assholes. And then, and then you're like, wait, so what's going on? And then and then yeah. they're not in the Yo, where they are in the video, but they're not in the video. It's like they, they they're black and white, and like, but you can't mm-hmm. see them or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it was it was just like, and they're not they never well they never showed their face on the artwork. So it was like mm-hmm. it was like this 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 introduction of them kind of being like we're gonna be like this for a little while, you know <laughs> we're gonna we're not gonna sell this image this daisy hippie image right that was being sold for. Them. It tells a story, man. That's the thing about the skits and, and the project. It's telling a story, and and that was the thing about a lot of the the records. Well, not a lot, but but a good a good amount of records back then. I think where you were still trying to tell stories, right? Because this this was your time, you know. You put out the album, the album may be out, or they pushed the album for a year, something like that, or two years, or whatever it was. And it was just a time to tell to tell a story. So that's why I think an album like but, this is is really good because it tells a story, even though they're shitting on themselves. It's still telling a story about what's going on in the industry and how they're interfacing with it at the time. Right. Yeah. And don't sleep on the sarcasm, man, because the very, very first right. skit, they right. were shitting on uh, MC Hammer and, um, and Vanilla mm-hmm. Ice by, 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 by showing these little kids that love them so much and talking about right, right, right. You know, how, how whack De La Soul is, but how, how dope Hammer is and how, and oh my God, look at the dancers that, that Vanilla Ice has. Oh my God, he can dance and <laughs> now, you know, just crazy. a dumbing down. Which is crazy because we're still dealing with that right now when people talk yep. about like Ice Spice and everything right now. Yep. Yep. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 This is something I said. This was just a fun album to play. It's true. Down to the skits, down to the to, to the records, the production. I think Prince mm-hmm. Paul bring, brings. I mean, we see later on in life with all his other side, you know, his other not side projects, his future projects, right? I think the mm-hmm. skits was definitely kind of like a him thing. I'm not gonna say like like you know just him because everybody's involved in making the skit, but I think the idea of like let's act out these like that's act, basically acting. You know what I'm saying? Let's mm-hmm. let's act out these scenes, shitting on our shit. And and then uh, you know go with this again this 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 kind of vision of like I, we're dead. We're, we're, we're I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know none of this for a fact or whatever. But in my mind, like as much of a Prince Paul fan I am, Daylight fan or whatever, like listening to and especially sitting noting the differences. Like once he was no longer producing for the group, like to me, like all the zany stuff, like the extra zany yeah. stuff, like the little yeah. like the little crazy cuts and the like the real funny cuts and the little the crazy like. You know, mm-hmm. like sample, you know, like all that stuff that that seems to be Prince Paul. Like they they they're gonna have the poetic, amazing, dope lyrics, they're gonna have like the the wild, you know, samples and beats, you know, like they lot themselves. But that extra zaniness, that extra craziness, that stuff that just makes you be like, Man, what the hell is going on here? That's that's like <laughs> Prince Paul to me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's yeah. like you know, he had he had a lot of fun with Stetson Sonic, you know, Stetson Sonic made some dope stuff and everything, but all of them produced. So I think he had a chance to be like, yo, I'm just going to, I'm going to get with these dudes and just go crazy and, and just have a ball doing all the crazy stuff I ever wanted to do. And like you said, you see it on his later projects, you know, yeah. his, his concept albums and all that stuff. You know, like, even yeah. the Grave Diggers, Grave Diggers, you know, he got with Rizzo and they doing some wild, just zany beats and stuff. I mean, like Prince Paul is a wild dude. Yeah, he Very had a personality. Man, dude. Yeah, yeah exactly. He was, he was supposed to put out the, uh, the Resident Alien project around that time. And... It just it just never happened, but it was kind of like on the same thing. They were uh, two rappers from Amityville, oh, out the plug, and Resident Alien. Got it. Mm-hmm. They, they they instead of using the scratch back for the curses, he would put that quaka. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, 
<laughs> like I feel, I, stuff, I, I, I feel like saying that in public sometimes when I don't want to curse. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then, then you might get in trouble for something else. They might think you said something else. So. Well, we got we got a, we got a super dope compliment in in the chat room about the album. Mr. September basically said, uh, "Music like this, you played while doing chores around the house." And then, according to the good Rev, that is <laughs> that is that, that, that's 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 the that's what he. Oh, I thought we lost him. Say it again, Rev. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's the standard. Like, can I clean up to this? <laughs> you gotta get motivated. Depending on how much you gotta clean up, you gotta be motivated. You know what I mean? <laughs> the fact. Yeah. I, I think I think we're gonna uh, wrap up the production portion of of this conversation. Again, we are talking the five mic dissection here on Eats Beats and Rhymes of De La Soul Is Dead, the classic 1991 second studio album released by the group. Again, a, a, a classic. It goes without saying. Even the source recognized it. And this is go this is one of those kind of albums that I think at the time got a lot of respect, but over the years kind of just got this sort of like, oh my goodness, like why were we not paying it this much attention when it came out? I don't feel like it got that amount of attention when it was it was out at the time, but now it's definitely considered like again, it shows up on some of the best hip hop album lists, you know, complex and and, and VH1s and all that kind of stuff. It shows up. This album, this album shows up on on the lit on the on those lists. So it's kind of interesting. We do have to talk about something that's very controversial, though. And I want everybody in the chat room to you know definitely pay attention to this part right. And if you're watching at home on YouTube, leave it in the comments section. Again, we do this every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I haven't said that enough tonight. Live here on Twitch. Shout out to everybody joining us on this holiday weekend. We are live. We're talking. De La Soul is dead, the five mic dissection. The Source gave out five mics back in the day and the Source magazine at some point in time, people are wondering like, why the Source? Listen, the Source was the hip hop Bible at some point, right? We took it very seriously, we believed it, it had credibility and it is said that this album was five mic worthy. It definitely meant, hey, let's at least pay attention to this. It's a very short list, not a very long list. And we are dissecting the five mic rating on De La Soul's second album. Ah, yo. Three, three, three mics meant you, you should, you should check it out. Five meant you definitely mm. need to check it out. This is a fact. Right, is a fact. right, right. <laughs> yep. but, with, but with that being mm. said, we, we, we've been giving out flowers all night. You know what I'm saying? We talked about the singles. You know what I'm saying? We talked about Ring, Ring, Ring. We talked about another, excuse me, uh, another, you know, it was a roller skating jam named Saturdays. Uh, Millie pulled a, a pistol on Santa, keeping the faith. We played Biddies in the BK Lounge when it came to lyrics. We played past the plug, peace porridge, Afro Afro connections. Now we just wrapped up the productions portion. We got to talk about the topic that ruffles a lot of feathers out there, but it's a conversation that needs to be had. If we're talking a classic album, can a classic album have a skip factor attached to it? And if you don't know what I'm referring to, it means like if something's a classic, are you really skipping any tracks? It's as simple as that. That's not right or wrong. It's the question. Mm -hmm. That being said, I want the chat room's opinion. Are there any songs? And by the way, everybody in this room as well. Are there any songs on this album that you feel deserve the skip factor label? And if so, why? And again, nothing wrong with with doing that. It's again, it's just a question on how can you know how many does that you know fall into a, into a category on classics? It's happened before many a time. We are on album number five, by the way, of the five mic dissections. We've had this conversation five times, and it's gotten controversial every single time. But I asked mm -hmm. the room, who wants to step up first? Is there a particular oh, song that you guys want to well, skip? I had a, I had a few. And, and we, oh, time yeah. out one second. Well, I just want to ask the room real quick. We talked about skits before. Yeah. I don't think skits will count. In this particular, oh. we're strictly talking music. Just saying that as a heads up. Go ahead, I think, uh, Mal. You want to start off? Go ahead. I want to mention just one quick thing, right? So, in you know, the older heads know when De La Soul was dead first came out, right? Especially like you know, old heads like me that bought the cassette. It was different than the CD. The, the yes. CD had extra bonus tracks on it, right? Yes. I will say this: the cassette version, and I will tell you which tracks were not on the cassette. I mean, we're not on the uh, cassette version. To me, it was absolute perfection, right? Um, no skippables in it. That's saying a lot for a cassette, because you know, fast mm -hmm. forward. But the CD had it added, kicked out the house, 
mm -hmm. worship, which explained yep. one of the skits that was actually on the cassette, which kind of threw yep. me at first got because one of the skits I didn't understand what, what Mace was saying in it. But then I understood when I got the, I guess, the full version on the um, CD. And it might have been, what, is it one other song? Can you think of us, Gang? It was one other song, I think. It may have been a third track that was, like, brand new. Oh, yeah, the, the, the piano, Johnny's the, Dead or whatever. Johnny, like. yeah, Johnny's Dead, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there's, like, these are, like, three, like, extra kind of, like, skittish, craziest, you know, very experimental, out there kind of songs that go along with the zaniness of the album. But to me, those are skippable. But to me, my initial, you know, first several months, year, whatever, however long I had the album. You can, you can take the bonus tracks out of this for the conversation. That's fine. I don't know, if, but the, I don't know are those considered bonus tracks, though. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, if you they, get the they CD, are. they have they are. Because, they they are? Okay. Version I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you why they're, why they're considered <laughs> bonus tracks. Because every time, every time that conversation comes up, people tend to refer to the fact that the bonus songs are not on the cassette. The fact that they even mention them as bonus songs. And I think at that time and place, 1991, CDs were out, but they weren't the most popular form of medium just yet, but they were highly yeah. rising to be exactly that. And I think mm -hmm. it was just another marketing ploy to be like, if you, yeah, cause if you have a Walkman, we want you to eventually get a CD player, right? So, and you know, yeah. for new sound. And if you do it, you get these extra songs. This is probably around the time. I think in right. 90, but you, still, you still had CD boxes that were, that were vertical, <laughs> that were like this long. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mind <laughs> you, if you, the CD is, is this big, the rest was empty box. <laughs> but yeah. the reason they created those boxes were because they didn't want the record stores to have to go through a whole new version of, of bin relocating and, and getting new bins to hold music right, because yeah. those are the same size bins as a 12 inch. If you mm, think about it. Right, right, it, right. Makes sense. So it'll, fit, it'll fit the vinyl section, you know, I mean, a, a, you know, a, a narrow, a narrower, right, sort of aisle. But as far as height is concerned, it'll, it'll fit a, a vinyl size coffin to hold uh, records sense. I'm, I'm telling you though Jules, i think the only thing that throws me off about them being actual bonus tracks though is the fact that base in the skit that's on the cassette mentions who do you worship mm -hmm. and i didn't know what he was talking about for like half a year i was like what does he mean who do you worship that devil sounding devil worshiping sounding joint like, who's he talking about and then i finally got the cd and i was like oh now it all now it all makes sense right. I, thought, I was like what is i just i just oh, so who, so who do, you, right? who do you worship yeah so you tell me who do you worship is not on the cassette no no Oh yeah, saying. yeah. I thought but he mentions songs. it. But he mentions it in the in the skit on the cassette. So what other songs were not on on the? Kicked out the house. Kicked out um, the, the house. Piano, Johnny's dead. Johnny's mm -hmm. And then who do you worship? Those those weren't on the cassette. Yep. See, I was gonna, I was gonna, I agree with everything that I was just gonna say that because I got the tape. I didn't even get the tape. I got a dub. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's the, that was the only version of the album that I knew until mm -hmm. I didn't get a CD player shit 91 I didn't get a CD player for like 4 or 5 years after that and it's very believable I believe it but mm -hmm. it, it's it you know it speaks volumes because I there there are no skips on on that De La Soul is Dead cassette ah, right. so I, got, I, got, I got you saying yeah. I got you saying that a lot yeah. Rev so Malcontent is that what you were saying besides that's the bonus exactly cut yeah, that's okay. yeah exactly yeah. what I was I saying. Agree. I, agree. Hey. I agree. I agree. You got Scan saying the same thing. I got people, and I got nine yeah. instrumentals in the chat uh, saying, first four hours of yeah. De La Soul, no skips. No skips. Was that trip? Pretty Not much. Thing for what that's on the DSP right now. Like, well, I heard, like, there's a few of them that I would skip. I'll skip, like, the Rap Diddy Rap show. Like, it's okay. not really needed. It's not really, it wasn't really needed, but... And uh, the, like uh, Johnny's dead. That's just it's yeah. crazy. I I, think I I picked all those as well, and I didn't know that those were bonus cuts because they they yeah. on the seat. Oh, they, 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 they're not on the cassette. Bonus. Yes, those are not on the cassette. But, I'm saying, but they also they also track list them like in the middle of the album. It's not like they put them at the very end. Mm. Like here's like, notes. Yeah. Like they. Yeah. So like I definitely kind of like Triple C said. I I, I had. Well, Rap the Rap Show was definitely yeah. Rap the Rap Show was definitely on the original, but um, but yeah, yeah. that's you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Man, who knows what kind of shit Tom Silverman was pulling to get those songs out? You worked at a, at a label. They put out different versions in different countries. So that could have been yeah. a European mm -hmm. version, Canadian version, a single. Uh, who, who knows? But, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even going right. to lie to you. I, I think that Kicked Out the House, for example, I think it's a spoof, right? It's, it's a mm -hmm. joke. At the same time, I also think it's it's them being like, 
you know, the label said we gotta do a dance record. Like, like, because of that well, time. Well, hip you, house, because of that hip house stuff. But remember, hip house died. At that time that you hip house died quickly. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you know, we, we gotta do one. It's like, if we're gonna do one, this is what, how this is how we do it. Yeah. It's kind of like I thought you know, they were making the play on Girl I'll House You. This exactly. That's exactly what I think the they're Jungle doing. Brothers? Yeah, literally yeah, the Jungle that's, Brothers. Because like, I think I think Tom Quinn looked at that and was like, "Yo, we're a dance label, motherfucker." Like. I mean, hip hop label too, but they were also like a day, like they had yeah, yeah. Tommy Boys established on both sides. So it's kind of like, give us a fucking house record and we out of here. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, mm. here. And it's like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> like, and I'm not even like, I still think to this day, because this is the era of the remix, right? As well. So, well, not yet, not 91 yet, but like, had that maybe been a little further, middle down the 90s, you would have gave that song. To any producer that does house music, they probably could have made the craziest remix, mm-hmm. and it would have been fire. And it still would have been the ploy on like getting kicked out the house, but like it wouldn't have been corny. It would have been like, like, oh, this shit go. Like mm-hmm. they gave that shit to like Frankie Knuckles or fucking, you know, what I'm saying Dave Morales or Masters mm-hmm. at Work or somebody. It's kind of like, oh, they they put that sauce on this shit. Like, <laughs> like I, feel like they, I feel like they gave a. It, it's a. It's not a bad record, but it's like this it's, is a joke. it's not. It's, it's so sarcastic, so though. I mean, they got the, guys yeah. the, the way the guy's singing it, 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 you know, all that stuff. I'm just like, oh, man. They just, they, just pour, they just pour it on, leaning into it. I'm like, come on, y'all, man. It's so sarcastic, dude. That shit was so funny. Some right it, was, it is, though. <laughs> That's hysterical. So we, 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 I think of all come to the agreements, because again, I didn't know that these records were particularly these, these quote unquote bonus cuts. So Technically, if that is the case, and I said it earlier, you know, we, we don't got to count these, but we're, it, I, those are the ones I would have skipped. So if we're not counting them, I kind of fall into the same kind of category as you guys. Like, I, there's no skips. There's no skips. Oh, here from Hobo. There's no skips on here. Yeah, Hobo, like you last, you Hobo didn't even say anything. I'm not skipping. It's, it's okay if there's skips. I'm not skipping anything on this album, man. <laughs> so, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing play, bro. And this might be, I'm not gonna lie, I think this might be the first out of the five albums that we've dissected where we haven't had a total agreement. Because there's people that say yes or no, and that's that's fine. That's not what we're here to say. I think it's the first time we've all been on the same page about no skips all the way through. No and skips, yep. That's pretty I mean, cool. You could get through the whole house. And before the album's over. <laughs> <laughs> according, according, according to Wikipedia, with the actual bonus songs, it uh, all tallies up to a 73 minutes and 49 seconds. So definitely an like hour in. Like, like a movie, you know, very good. Yeah. Even with the credits, exactly. So I, I, I want to, to wrap things up. Again, we do this every Monday night, but we do this once a month. And if you're in tune with Eats, Beats, and Rhymes, we do it every end of the month. That's right, the last Monday of the month, we take on the dissection, tonight's dissection. And for the next few months, we'll be all about Source Magazine's five mic rating system. We've covered five albums to date, including De La Soul is Dead Tonight. And we've talked about a bunch of music. We played a bunch of records. We classified them on the singles. We classified them under what we deemed were the best songs with lyrics, the best songs with production. And we even attempted the controversial conversation about the skip factor, and we're all on the same page. No skips on this album. The Last Soul is Dead is sort of proving to be, again, not that we were questioning it, but, but exactly what it is, a five mic rated album without question. I want to go around, <clears throat> pardon me, I want to go around the room real quick and ask everybody single-handedly with, with, a, with a quick answer and a quick description on why, but round number five, did the album age well, in your opinion, in the year 2024? Let's start with my man DJ Hobo, Triple T Radio. DJ Hobo, in your opinion, did this album age well? Um, yeah, I think it did. I think uh, the topics are still pertinent to this date. Um, with uh, Millie's got to pull the gun on Santa. Um, not so much My Brother's a Crackhead, but still, you know, addiction's a thing. So still, that's still a... A, a pertinent topic um just throughout man the whole album is is dope the production is is dope um i don't know if it would 
if you if it came out today, would it still bang the same? But I think that's just because kids are lost now. But um, <laughs> even a stack, they're lost. But uh, as far as music musicality and the dopeness of the album, definitely stands the test of time. Mm-hmm. Triple C, I want to ask you quickly as well. Did this album age well, in your opinion? Yes, I think so. And it's a well, well-deserved well five mic to me. Even though I, I do say it have some skip, but it's still still a great album. It's still, I'll, I'll still play you too. Well, Triple C, what, what skips did you have? I thought we were all on the same page. It was just the uh, the, the, the skits that we were skipping. What, what what songs did you want to skip? No, I'll tell you the Rap D Rap Show. Uh, what's the other one that's Shring a Lot? Kate? What, I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it. Shring a Lot. Shring a Lot. Okay. Yeah. But overall, it's, it's a great album. Exactly. Got you. Okay, so, okay, so you actually did have some tracks to skip. But again, again, no big deal. It's not like it changes anything. Fair enough. Let's go keep moving here. The Good Rev, what do you think, in your opinion, 2024, did this album age well, yes or no? Oh, absolutely, it aged well. I mean, the fact that it was brought up on uh, Power on Raising Canaan last season, because you mm. know it takes place in 91, 92, and when Jukebox was taking her, trying to get in the group, the girl that, that liked her was like, isn't De La Soul is Dead the best album ever? Mm. And that was that was so dope to hear hear them say that, man. Mm. That's dope. Shout out that, to it's still it's resonating. Mm-hmm. I mean, those girls weren't even born when that shit came out. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. So we got we have a few people obviously in the green chair. Let's keep moving here. DJ Scanless, Baba Midi. In your opinion, twenty twenty four did this album age well? Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, timeless album. Um, we're still bumping it. And again, you know, we have one not well we have a forever song off of this album Rolling Sk- a roller skating jam is, is a forever record it will yeah. be played forever that yeah. by itself is the litmus test to the to to this album man that's a good point that that is a forever record malcontent i think i know the answer but again we need it on the record sir 2024 do you think this album aged well? And by the way, in the chat room, leave it in the chat room if you think the same thing or if you think differently. Let us know in the chat room. And at home too, in the comment section, make sure you let us know what you think. Did this album, De La Soul, is that age well in today's climate, 2024? Matt, what do you think? Mm. Oh man, you knew the answer? Is, is, is that obvious? <laughs> Did my t-shirt give it away? Yo man, a resounding, a resounding yes, man. I mean, like it was very, very, very fresh production, you know, just creative. And it's just like, it's still to this day, like creative and just like wild and out there and just unpredictable. Like every single time I've listened to that, I've listened to this album so much, you know, since it came out. And um, I mean, I tell you, man, I, I, I never get tired of it. Like, you know, I mean, I, maybe it being absent from the DSPs for all that time has a little to do with it, but I don't think so. Like I, I found myself listening to it a lot when it came back on that, you know, of course I own, so I've watched, I've listened to it a million times. And, uh, and I mean, you know, and then, yeah, it, it just just so y'all know, like we were talking about the the bonus track. So Hobo mentioned another one. Duh. My brother's a bass head. That was another one of the bonus tracks. So that wasn't on the original. For real? Um, that, that, that was skippable. That was a dope one. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, that was yeah, that was a skippable too in my mind. But I mean, the original is just it's a perfect. This and for them to follow up a classic with another bona fide classic, that's just amazing to me, man. I mean, I, yeah. Uh-huh. Can't speak enough about. It. I just absolutely love this album. It's uh-huh. aged extremely well. I think I really hope more kids. You know, nowadays, now that it's on the DSPs, I mean, yeah, everybody hears about three feet high, but I really hope they start checking out De La Soul is Dead, too. Like, I think they'll really love it, and especially the the kind of sarcasm, you know, and this funny, the extra funny skits and the, the kind of chip on their shoulder that they had during it. They did. They did. I think that the, the title might be a little off-putting just because, you know, all the, all the deaths surrounding the group in, in the last you know, few years yeah. or whatever. But it's true. It's, it's, a, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a classic album. I hope they do listen to it. I, uh, in agreement with everybody here as well, again, I, I think it definitely aged well. Doing the homework was a pleasure for this one. It was so good. The 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 the, the album was just a trip down memory lane. It was it was really yeah. like pointing like where you were at that point in time in life, who you were hanging with, moments in time when you were listening to that, which most of the time were like a little private moment, kind of like this, you know, mm-hmm. headphones and the train usually involved and or a bus, but just private not really out loud kind of sharing. I never got to share this album out loud. I didn't get to share a lot of my music out loud with a lot of people. It was mostly like this. 
But I think that's what made hip hop so personal too at that point in time because it was kind of like intimate, right? Yeah. You have your little headphones on, you do you. But that's um, no oh, man. That's that's De La Soul is dead, and obviously, it turned out to be an expression that you know didn't hold any weight because they ended up producing and pushing more and more classic you know work down the line. They are still with us today and and they still putting out music like i said they they you can't go wrong with any album none yeah. there's no uh, Dilla album you can go wrong with none no. and to, that, and to that point man like those dudes they i think rev brought it up i mean they have been the most consistent hip-hop group i'm gonna say ever man nobody um mm -hmm. yeah they, they didn't they didn't break up you know they, right. didn't, they never maybe they took some breaks but they never stopped. Even when they took breaks, they never stopped performing, mm -hmm. and they ne they didn't mm -hmm. break up. Death broke them up, sadly. But mm -hmm. but as a group and consistency and what they did and how much they represented hip hop to its core of what we talk about hip hop being, the best, mm -hmm. the best. Even the even the mm -hmm. last one, the last one, the even anonymous the nobody, one. the anonymous yeah, nobody, still nobody. fire too. Mm -hmm. Oh my fire. god, fire. Yep. They made an sure. album with the gorillas, man. I worked that mm -hmm. too. And and the joint that uh the the concept concept album um first served that, that Dave and Pos uh, did together. That was, that was on Ducktown. Yeah. That, that was, was on Ducktown with these producers from Sweden. Yeah, dope skits on that joint. Mm -hmm. Dope album. Um and the uh the, the joint they did for Nike, man, the, the Nike run album. I don't yeah, know if mm -hmm. yeah, people have that one. But mm -hmm. yeah, that album was Hold crazy on. though. Let's let's also just real quickly talk about their, their singles. They went nuts on their singles. You know, most people most singles may have an A side, a B side, an instrumental, instrumental. These dudes would have like, I don't know how many remix, how many remixes do they put mm -hmm. on like all their singles? Man, it's always like five different remixes for like Saturdays, you know. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't know yeah, I think I think that's yeah, definitely the I think that's definitely an attribute of, of Tommy Boy as well, understanding the yes. concept of, of different mixes and DJs and mm -hmm. all that kind of, even though it was a cassette single, like you said, like nobody's really gonna use a cassette single to mix anything, but it was kind of like, yeah, but they heard a DJ on a, on a show do it and they, mm -hmm. here it is on the yep. side or whatever. And, and again, they, they, were, they were a dance and hip hop label, like I said, so like they definitely understood the DJ market and, mm -hmm. and you got to respect Tommy Boy for, listen, for a small boutique, Indie label, they put out some major fucking like power mm -hmm. hitters, yeah, in the hip hop stratosphere, yeah, mm -hmm. that all time classics, rock. all time classics, mm -hmm. Planet Rock, right? Planet so, yeah. Rock, yes, and Planet Rock, Tommy Boy, and Planet Rock. Well, let's talk about Forever Records for a second on Tommy Boy Records. Mm -hmm. Planet Rock, Planet Rock, OPP, 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 OPP mm -hmm. yes, Jump Around, Jump Around, mm -hmm. yes. Gangsta's Paradise. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, that's a forever record. I don't care. Like, yes. It's not yes. A no, you're right. It's I, a it's, it's, it is. It is. Yes. Yes. Uh, who, 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 One last people and Tommy Boy. You and I T Y. Yep. Um, yep. I mean, dude. It goes on. It goes on. Yeah, it's ridiculous. No, it's yeah, it's ridiculous. not bad for a fucking indie boutique label. Like I said, I mean, it had major distribution. Let's not get it twisted. It's not like this is like five guys in an office. But at one point, it kind of <laughs> was. And. Mm. I'm just saying for 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 them to have the vision. I mean, you gotta understand what De La Soul is. We've we've been privy to be able to hear so many demos and things of that nature, especially when we talk about the first album. That didn't sound like anything that was out of the time. And for them to be like, mm -hmm. yeah, like boop, we're gonna do something and like and we're gonna let y'all do it and and then bring it to us. You know what I'm saying? When you're done, like and, and of course it wasn't that, that cut and dry. It, but it, I'm just saying, like, and especially in like late '88. 989 like that's when they first got the you know i think about way mm -hmm. back in 88 when kane was killing it and i mean mm -hmm. you know and like, we're, gonna take a chance on these long, yeah. we're gonna take a chance on these long island i mean respectfully yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that like nerds like just because that's what they i just mean like it helps summarize the conversation it's like like these nerd dudes from long island like they had this like it's like wait what like so what's going on yeah. so and again i think it also goes to in tonight's conversation like yo why do they always think they can step to us you know what i'm saying they don't mm -hmm. know Got them joints, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> and then you it's go, the truth. You go, they last for the people. You know who you could thank for the for putting out the grind date, right? 
<laughs> Beyonce's <laughs> father. Matthew oh, Knowles. Matthew Knowles had a lot to do with that. He owned the label, Sanctuary. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. oh, did he? Wow. Oh, okay. Great album. Man. Sanctuary was putting out mad rap albums, but yeah, Grande was on was on Sanctuary Records. Wow. Mm. Thank you. Okay. That, thank you for I that. I realized that, that. Yeah, that, I realized that one. That's, that. that's good shit going good, bro. Wow. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Yeah. September has a good question in the chat. He said, no, La- no, don't do it. Don't do that. He said, De La Soul is dead or Illmatic? Come on, nah, man. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, answer, I'm not answering that question. I refuse. <laughs> I, I'll answer it. It's Illmatic. And, and, and simply because um, sound, like the sound was changing in that, in that early 90s. And you could tell a lot of that stuff that, that, that De La did was. It was like that, like night, like eighty nine, ninety. Still, even it might be even like stuff they were working on even around three feet high, and the mix will never stand close to like the mix on Illmatic. Are we gonna talk about it? Is 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 on the five mic um list? It's coming up soon. Well, you know what though? True. What's coming? What you mean? Oh, you mean those Illmatic? But listen, we we we. We got something before that though. We got something before that uh, Illmatic. I mean, right now, I'm telling you right now, my personal opinion, Illmatic. That's my personal opinion. Hobo doesn't want to answer, but Trip, are you too scared to answer too? No, oh, you know I'm forever Illmatic. I'm forever. Illmatic. Hey, forever. <laughs> ever and ever. Okay, Mal, what do you what do you think? I I listen more to De La Soul is Dead, and I love Illmatic, but De La Soul is Dead is no 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 no, no 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 no. We're going we're going by the Good Reverend's rules. It's what do you listen to more? And, and Good uh, Rev, which album do you listen to more? Me personally. I've no. probably I've I've probably played De La Soul is Dead way more times than Illmatic. Wow! In, in, in its entirety, yeah, I play Illmatic mm-hmm. a lot. <laughs> I mean, I play yeah, nine Matic tracks, nine time. tracks versus twenty-seven. You know, oh my so, God. right, it's a right, good point. <laughs> right, uh, right, right. It's a very good point. But Scam, but right. who do you got? What's there? Ooh, I don't know. It's a tough one. This is a tough one because I I think I don't know. I I think I think I might be playing De La Soul more. Uh, I, I think so. I think so. If you're gonna ride with me, I, I, I infamous. Where you at? <laughs> Ike infamous. Where you at? Well, again, remember, remember, like I said, as long as Saturday being the forever record, that record is gonna get burned forever, wherever you go. But Illmatic is a forever album. It is too, but it's forever in a different way. It's it's apples and oranges. That's the that's the problem just with this conversation. It's, it's apples a three and oranges. Year gap. <laughs> it's a three year gap. It's in but, yes, it's a three-year gap. But it's just too. apples and oranges because I mean, if you think about it, right? If you really think about it, like like I said earlier, De La Soul to me again, they're, they're touchable. They're they're, for, they're of the people in my opinion, right? Uh-huh. Where Illmatic and Mob Deep and those records that we love too, and we were of that oak also, it's more of a street-based record. So it's apples and oranges. One's is like, mm-hmm. we're having fun, it's the suburbs, we're kids, but then this is like the street life over here. So it's not, to me, it's, I can appreciate them for both, for both things that they offer. I, I think you have, yeah. I, I think you have a better chance at getting Playing the dozens with a chick at Burger King versus pulling the tech out the dresser. They not so is is real, like like you scan said, real relatable, real life. And and ill Maddox like watching a movie. Yeah. A right. movie, but it's right. like watching a movie. Yeah, I, can't, we I can't, I mean, I know there are people who can relate to that life. I sure, can. absolutely. But I loved it. <laughs> no, no, hey, look, hey, look, I'm, I'm on some, I'm on some, I'm on some, I'm on some hip hop message board. And there's a lot of the, a lot of the younger, the younger so-called hip hop heads or younger folks. They, some of them even think it was written is better than Illmatic, which is blasphemy oh, to me. I, just, just for, 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 for the sake of, of the show real quick, I just want to say good night. Everybody, thanks for joining us every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We catch us here live on Twitch, Eats, Beats, and Rhymes. Catch us another episode of Who Do You Got? We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.